Amen. Yeah, I told John yesterday, I said, you know what? I'm showing you up tomorrow, man. You know, I said I have a three-piece. I can't put that, the coat on, but I got tired of him looking so sharp and me wearing jeans, but, you know, I don't feel comfortable in these clothes. So. <laughs> Every time I was wearing these clothes, I was at court. You know what I'm saying? So, for real. <laughs> That's real right there, man. You know, I was remembering this morning, like, it's funny how much everybody's been talking about God's love today because, you know, you know, there's one spirit, right? You know, so and it's just interesting how the Lord just, like, is, is training everybody's mind to receive his word. You know, and like this morning in Bible study, everybody's, you know, like the theme was like God's love in Jesus. And then this song, you know, it says, I will put my trust in his love. It's a firm foundation. And I was just remembering uh, well, I, that's what I was going to speak about today. You know, is God's love is, is the foundation that we have to build upon, you know, and it's, it's Jesus Christ. <laughs> that's where the love of God was manifest to us. Like, it's easy to get caught up in this world and in your flesh and feeling like you need to feel something, you know, and, and thinking like, like, I don't feel God's love. I don't, I don't feel it today, you know, but that's a trick. That's a lie from the enemy because, you know, it's our flesh that wants to feel stuff. But faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, you know. So sometimes not seeing isn't dependent just upon, like, a physical actual seeing, but it's, like, not feeling either, you know what I mean? Like, not understanding, you know. So we got to walk in faith sometimes just based on what God's already shown us. And it might have been 2,000 years ago, but... That's the only sign that's given to us to show it, you know, because Jesus, he says he's perfected forever with one sacrifice. He can't just keep coming every 50 years to reassure us and be crucified all the time. No, he only, one and done, you know, it's over, you know, he doesn't have to do it again, but we got to believe in that one sacrifice that God has given us through his son, Jesus Christ. So it's important to have, to understand God's love in that, and the foundation that he's given us in Jesus Christ, because it says no other foundation can be laid. The foundation is Jesus Christ. He's the cornerstone, but that cornerstone is a testimony of God's love. Like he wanted to, that's, everything is based on his love. You know, I, did, I didn't have that understanding when I was younger. Like every time I slipped up or made a mistake or like I was sinful, I was like, God doesn't love me. Or, or I'm just, I can't do this. I'm not, I'm not cut out for this, you know? I didn't understand God's love. And, like, as we're talking, and, and the church being called First Love, and, I, and we are trying to get back to the zeal of our first love when you come to the knowledge of Jesus. Like, remember how, you know, like, hyped up you were, and you're telling everybody about Jesus, and you're doing all these things. Like, I remember I went and took all my clothes out of the closet. I had all these buckle clothes. I had expensive clothes. I went and donated them at the church. I'm, like, dressing raggedy for years, giving away my clothes, and just giving away everything, and I was, like, sold out. But, but then you get, like, you, you kind of forget about that, you know? It, you, get, you get in this, like, Christianese where you just become a Christian, and you, and you, like, even now, it's like a temptation. Like, I feel like it's work. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, it's, like, become my job now to, to be a minister and, and to, to build the church and to, to do these things. It's not like some, it's a temptation to not be working out of this adoration and zeal of the love that was revealed to me through Jesus Christ when I really understood what God did, you know? And when, when we talk about first love, it's, I think it's important to realize the first love, it's not the, to remember, it's the first love is God's love for us. It says in John, 1 John 4, 9 through 10, it says, In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Like, Jesus Christ's crucifixion, 
That is the manifestation of God's love and testimony of it to us all. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Like, when you look at Jesus, no matter how you're feeling, and you come to faith in God through Jesus Christ, every time that you're doubting God's love, you need to remember Jesus Christ on the cross and, and, and realize this is the testimony of God's love to you. He gave his son. Like we can't, I don't think we really understand it. I don't know if we can understand it. But I have a son now, you know? So, and, I, and I'm starting to understand a little bit more. Like I can't even imagine, you know? But God had this, you know, he's got an eternal plan and he's able to foresee and foreknow everything and he understands like what he's doing. And it was, it says it pleased the Lord to crush him in Isaiah 53. Like, because he knew he made him a sacrifice for us to bring us all in, you know, because God wanted us all there with him. You know, he didn't want it just to be him and Jesus. <laughs> he brought, he, he sent Jesus here for you so that you could be with him. And we just have to, this is the foundation that we got to build upon. You can't move forward in your life with the Lord unless you understand how much he loves you and what he did for you. Because that's the enemy. That's one of the biggest traps that I fell into was just the pity party and and feeling like I was cursed and that God didn't love me and I and I you know just couldn't be forgiven and I just kept falling into sin because I just didn't understand his mercy and his love you know but but his love it sets us free you know like like it says in Galatians 5:1 it says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free, and don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The yoke of bondage that was through the covenant of Moses, where it was line upon line upon line, here a little, there a little, do this, do that, and we were following this set of rules. Like, you see the Pharisees. They were so worried about the guy that was carrying the mat on the Sabbath day. They, they didn't even, that dude just got healed. All they were focusing on was the fact that he was carrying this mat on the Sabbath day. This is how blind they were. They got so caught up in the law of paying attention because they had found their own righteousness because it's easy. We like the idea of that we're in control of our own righteousness. Like, all I got to do is X, Y, Z. I can do that, you know. But the law could never make you perfect. The law, it says the law could never make you perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw close to God, through Jesus, you know, it's through that love that was manifest where we understood that it's not even within ourselves to do right, we, we couldn't do it, we, we were hopeless, we were lost without hope in this world, and at that time when we were living in an absolute lost in hopelessness, God sent his son. We weren't looking for his son. We weren't even asking for his son. We didn't even know that we needed his son. But God, in his mercy, sent Jesus and spared us. It says, I don't even have this, but it says while we were enemies of God, Christ died for us. Like You need to understand you were his enemy. And he sent Jesus for you while you were his enemy. Like, I, this is how I've been able to grow and come into the calling of God because I was, there was no hope for me. You know what I mean? Like, I was, I couldn't do the right thing. I was in prison, you know? I was in prison sitting there hopeless. You know, I still was still just getting caught up in the world. And then I just didn't believe God loved me. And I just believed all the lies of the enemy. But then God convinced me in, that, in a place where judgment was all I could understand according to my flesh was what I had coming. That's when God drew me out and showed me, no, I love you. 
I've numbered the hairs of your head. <laughs> like, I, like, I just want everyone to understand, like, you have to understand that. The very hairs of your head are all numbered. Even if you're bald, they were numbered before you lost them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all right. You're going to get them back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, I was, there was a funny, I, and when I was in prison, there was a time where I thought I was going bald. And I was like, Lord, no, don't send me home from prison bald. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's messed up. You know, and I was like, you know, the hairs of my head are all numbered. You know I'm running out. You know, so, but, uh, but he didn't. He didn't. He spared me because Christina, you know, I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't have worked out if I had showed up bald. So, <laughs> anyway, so, but that yoke of bondage, there's a freedom that comes with an understanding of what Jesus Christ accomplished for us. And, and being freed and surrendered to, like, the acknowledgement of that. It's not about you. We all fall short, right? We all. I'm glad it says all. We all fall short of the glory of God. We all need mercy. It says some men's sins go before other men's sins follow behind. Like I've had sins that were more obvious. And he who is forgiven much loves much. Like so it's, it's, it's easier for me to get emotional about God's love because I see I was dead, you know, but we were all dead. It doesn't matter. Like one single act of disobedience against the living God is worthy of death. This is just how great he is. That's why the dude got stoned to death on the Sabbath for picking up sticks. God was showing us an example of his greatness and his holiness. And showing us like, look, we have to have Jesus. We have to have this mediator who's going to stand before God on our behalf and take up this cross and take up the punishment that we deserve because we can't do it. So in 2 Corinthians 3, 14, 17, it says their minds were blinded until this day there remains a veil, that is the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. Even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when the heart turns to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So, and the Lord is showing me, like, this freedom is from thinking this law, you can do it. When you, when you turn to the Lord, when you bow your knee to the Lord and confess, you know what I mean, Jesus alone... That's when you come into this place where you find freedom. And it's a freedom from thinking that it's about you and something you can do and about your own righteousness. You have to realize, realize in the Lord alone our righteousness and strength. It's in Isaiah 45, 24. He says, they will say of me in the Lord alone our righteousness and strength. To him men shall come. All that rage against him shall be ashamed. You have to acknowledge, you have to come to an understanding that Jesus is your only hope and he's the only one righteousness and your righteousness is only found in him in full surrender to him, resting in him and what he's accomplished.